Whatever you do, don't quit your job and try to work for yourself until you've done the three things that I'm going to tell you about in today's video. I get it. Working for yourself is much better than punching the clock and making money for somebody else. However, rushing this process can be disastrous if you don't take the proper precautions and it'll lead you to a very desperate position. In this video, I'm going to read and respond to an Instagram DM that I got from somebody who currently finds himself in this situation. But before we get into it, we're giving away this truck to a premium or platinum subscriber of Quote IQ next month. So if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments, check out quote IQ linked in the comment section and the description of this video. Also, if you're looking to start a pressure washing business, but you're not sure what chemicals to use, how to mix them, how to clean every service on a residential job site, property protection, or how to set up your equipment, check out the how to wash course. It'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. So I'm going to go ahead and read this message and then I'll get into the three things you need to do in order to go full time into your business. Hey man, I know you're busy, but I honestly don't know what to do at this point. I've watched all your videos and have fully prepared myself for this job. I quit my full time job to pursue my own business. It was going good. I've done one job, but my pressure washer broke and I don't have the money to spare to fix it. I can't find constant customers either. I just want some friendly advice. So my advice for our buddy Brian is to find another full-time job and work in it until he's completed the three steps that I'm about to lay out for you guys. Step one is have six to 12 months of money saved up for all your bills. This may seem a little drastic to some people. You know, you might say three months savings would probably be all right, but the biggest thing you need to keep in mind whenever you're working for yourself is no one is telling you when to show up and punch the clock. Nobody is guaranteeing that you're going to get customers and nobody's guaranteeing that all your equipment is going to work all the time. So to ensure that you have a solid safety net in place to take on this venture, I would advise at least six months of expenses in your savings account. Step two is going to be work part time in your business until you have too many customers to get to everybody working part time. One of Brian's biggest mistakes was not establishing his business fully before taking the leap to go full time into it. There are so many facets to running a successful business that you don't really know about until you start working in that business. For instance, acquiring customers, working on equipment, performing jobs, scheduling jobs, reinvesting in your marketing, speaking to customers, time management, reinvesting into equipment, and the list goes on and on. So step two really serves two purposes. Firstly, it gives you the business experience in small doses, so that way it's manageable working part-time. But what it also does is it gives you a solid base of customers that you can lean on and offer other services to if your lead flow is ever to slow down. And if you don't have a way to keep up with your customers, I highly recommend you check out Quote IQ linked in the comment section description below, because every customer you acquire involved work. Either it involved ad spend, it involved time to market, to those customers or it came from word of mouth from a customer that you did a job for. Your client list is one of the most valuable things your business has and you need to make sure that you're keeping track of it because if you don't, you're going to have to do more work to acquire more customers. You're going to have to spend more money to acquire more customers, pass out more flyers, run more ads, and it just doesn't make any sense not to take advantage of the customers that you already have. Step three is to have a plan for the slow season. A lot of people think that, you know, as long as I'm getting business right now, everything is always going to be good for me. However, in reality, everything is cyclical, including your business. So it may be spring right now and you're getting that spring rush of customers, but just because it's good in the spring doesn't mean that it's going to be good in the winter. So along with having money saved for expenses and having a solid book of customers that you can no longer manage part time, you need to have a plan for the slower months. When it gets cold, when people aren't concerned about whatever services that you're offering, you need to have a plan because not having a plan and just assuming that everything is always going to be good is a disaster waiting to happen. So if you're thinking about quitting your job and going full time into your business, please adhere to the steps that I put together in this video as best as possible in order to give yourself the highest chance of success. Now, if you made this far in the video, comment down below success and I'll hashtag you a real one. Check out Quote IQ, check out How to Wash, but my name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed and until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.